Yeah. Today's the uh, 14th day of Cheshvan and the 15th of November. <laughs> and we'd, like we said, we're, we're going to look at something from Priya Aretz, from Reb Mendel Vitebsker. And um, this is uh, pretty much the Shita of the Baal Shem Tov for the for the Akeda. What was the binding of Isaac about? Why, why is it a Nisayon? Why is it a test? A test of what? So he says, regarding the test of the binding of Isaac, the Medrash and Rashi explained that Abraham had reasons to question God's ways. The, the, the test... I'm going to call it Regarding the test. He had doubts. I, 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 say that again. I'm sorry. I was he had sorry. questions. Abraham yeah. Avinu. Yeah. yeah. Why is it? So this is the ultimate, ultimate problem. It's the, according to most opinions, this is the tenth and final test. There's other opinions that say that afterwards it was another one, but, but this is the main, uh, the, the main uh, path. So what was so difficult about it? So in the in the medrash, this is also. It's going to a number of places. Rabbi Abba said, and Rashi quotes this, that Abraham expressed his thoughts to God, and he said, Yesterday you told me through Isaac shall your offspring be called. First of all, you told me that what I wanted to have a nation, a people, will come through Isaac. So I thought that Isaac was my, uh, my uh, pedigree, was my uh, continuation. Now you tell me, and then you turned and said, Take your son, and then you said, take your son, your only son, and, and shecht him, and, 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 and bring him as a, as a sacrifice. And then finally, after he does everything, then an angel appears to him and says, now you tell me, do not lay your hand on the boy. <laughs> so what do you want? So decide. <laughs> now on the face of it, it's like you're indeci- in, indecisive. That's what it looks like. Wait, you mean because God spoke to them? I don't no, 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 no. Because first God says, Isaac's yeah, going to be... Then, 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 then he says, says don't do it. D- then he says, slaughter him. Then he says, don't, don't do it. Slaughter. So which one do you want? Oh, oh, oh. But you're indecisive. Do what they don't. <laughs> so <laughs> decide what you're inconsistent. Doubt? What? In other words, there is doubt in either way. God's inconsistent. What kind of a God is this? If, if God tells you one plus oh, one is not equal to saying. two. Okay, okay. Oh, that was the... Okay. That's the problem. Okay. So this appears as a change of will in the creator of it. It's worse than him telling me one plus one equals three. That I can live with. Because it says in the Torah, whatever they tell you. <laughs> but here, your will seems to be inconsistent. Much worse. It's not your mind. Will is above the mind. What do you want in the end? I'm willing to do everything. I'm willing to listen to everything. But you're inconsistent. This appears as a change of will in the Creator, God forbid, which is a root of disbelief, heaven forbid. Says, says, the, says the, uh, the Vitebsker that in, in our times, this is the root of disbelief, that a person is confused. He doesn't know what God wants from him. So that's the root of disbelief today. In every generation, it's something else. In our generations, it has to do with will. With will. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want from me in the end? People don't know what to do. Similarly, the challenges of why the righteous suffer, uh, the apparent contradictions to the Torah's promises, and other doubts and false beliefs exist as counterparts to each level of devotion and realization, realization of his true wisdom. And it can be, so I, I didn't say it right, in Avram's time that was a problem. He says in, in other times in history, the problems are different. Yeah, every generation has its problems with God. Problem there's, a, there's always a, a place where uh, uh, doubt creeps in. Okay. So, and, 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 and the person is devoted, but it's a problem. Rashi comments that the serpent was the most cunning of all creatures and hence the most cursed. In parallel, the greatness of its cunning led to its downfall. However, our forefather Abraham, peace be upon him, withstood the test I guess they took that from the Muslims, who stood the test and did not question his face in the divine words, despite them appearing contradictory. So the test was to overcome this contradiction and to do what God said without doubting that it's God speaking to him. And he strengthened his great and powerful belief in God's simple will. So what's the difference between simple will? Uh, here it is in Hebrew. Um, 
כן, I hope that's what it says, כזה... להתחזק באמיתות, לא, כן, והחזקה מרצונו הפשוט יתברך. So what does that mean? פשוט and complex in Hasidus means whether something is enclosed or not. Meaning, if I tell you I like, I don't know, fruit, but I don't tell you which kind of fruit. So it's relatively more simple to say I love fruit than to say I love apples. Because my love of fruit now is enclosed in the apples. So when you say simple will entirely, you're saying that there's something that's not connected at all to anything. Meaning the simple will of Hashem is that He wants Avram to have a nation, to, to have a nation come out of Him. But the question whether it's going to be Isaac or not, that's already complex will. Because it's already enclosed in this idea that it's Isaac. So Avram, when he sees this contradiction, what does he see it as? He sees it as an invitation to go above the complex will, the enclosed will. That he has to go back to the simple will. The simple will has always been the same. I will make you into a great I'll go nation. Back to that close, right. yeah. uh, not cloud, but no, rather we're... unenclosed. It's oh, not specific. It's not specific. Right. Okay. It hasn't enclosed itself. It hasn't. Yes, yes, yes. He does not understand the workings of God at all, and all apparent evil from him is actually true goodness. All words of God that appear contradictory all go to one place without any change or deviation, heaven forbid. And they all come, they all go to the same place. What do you mean they go to the same place? The same will will be done. It's, it doesn't matter. It's just a question of how is it going to happen. So that you, in Avram's time, that was, he had to get, 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 surmount that. He had to go above that. Um, what is not understood lies only within us. And the problems of containing these opposites is only ours. And that's what we said yesterday, that this is about paradox. That in the end, these are all paradoxes. Now, why is this so important? Because no perception can fully grasp his word or interpret his intentions. Because anything that he enclosed himself into, there will always be another, another opposite enclosement also. Like in the world. Hashem wants all the world. He wants everything that's here. There's day and there's night. So what do you understand? This was the idea that Avram, that we see in the Medrash, what happened with Avram? That he saw at first it was day, he thought the sun was ruling. What do you mean the sun's ruling? That what Hashem wants is the sun to rule, and he wants it to be day. But then there's night, so he says, oh, Hashem wants him to be night. And then he sees again his day, so, so which one do you want? He says, I'm a, I'm a God of many faces. I want this, and I want this, and, but, but it's not that I want you to worship all of these and see my multiplicity. I, I'm inviting you to get over it, and, and go above. That's what he said to him. Uh, he took him outside. He took him above the stars. What do you mean above the stars? Above all of, all of nature. Because nature has is, is many faces to it. So you're never going to figure God's true being from nature, because there's contradictions everywhere. He may call evil good and good evil, but certainly his thoughts and simple will are beyond understanding. Sometimes, uh, now this is a very troubling thing for most people still till now. Why is this troubling to people? Because, and, and this is where, this is most of what I want, uh, you should read the rest, but this is the point. The point is that Baal Shem Tov and Hasidus is based on paradox. What happened in the world? There's, uh, sometimes, all you need is right in front of you, and, and if you don't read it right, you don't see it. Why was it that until about the destruction of the temple, everywhere in the world, everybody was basing their knowledge, their morals, everything on, on divinity? Everybody was. And then slowly it, it, it recedes until sometime around 400 years ago, it basically disappears everywhere in the world. Because there's no experience anymore of divinity. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that if scientists come to us today and they tell us about things that we've never seen, we don't understand the math either. If they, if they, if they explained it to us, if the best scientists came and explained it on TV, most people will not watch because they don't get it. So why do they think it's true? If you, don't, if you don't have this as an experience, they tell me about gamma rays and, and things that you don't experience. What are you talking about? How do you know this? So why do people accept it? Because it makes sense. Why does it make sense? Because it's logical. The world today is in a place where what's being developed is the mind. The logical, rational mind. So if somebody comes with stories about uh, uh, magic, 
Ah, it's for little children. Why? Because today the mind, the, the human mind in general, is caught up in, in, in the rational mind. That's what we're developing now. That's where we are. In th- 2,000 years ago, when people came and spoke about the angels, why didn't people go like, oh, that's nonsense? Because they need, it was an explanation to fit. <laughs> that was their experience. They didn't want, I'm sorry. They, I didn't it is fit their experience. It fit their experience. They didn't know. Not everybody saw angels, right. and not right. everybody knew what they were. And, but but the explanation that that the theologians or or the scientists of the time were giving made sense to them. Hamlet believed it, that ghost. You it, know, I mean, you know, that's that's what people, people did. lived yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So the experience was different. It's not that they were irrational. They were just as rational, but rational wasn't the story. That's not what people were interested in at the time because it didn't give a, 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 a good enough explanation for their experience. So this, I, I, the world used to be experienced differently. That's the only conclusion you can come to because science is not divorced or uh, philosophy. They're not divorced from common knowledge, from common experience because they're also people. And then you ask, is this accepted? Do people accept this? I'm not talking about the scientists. I mean, the common folk, do they, if they accept it, it means that it just fits the, the world view. It fits how people experience reality. So comes the Baal Shem Tov and says, now is the time to return. To, to, uh, there's divinity is going to reveal, it, is revealing itself again. It was gone for 2,000 years. Now it's coming back. How are you going to elevate yourself from the rational mind? Because you don't want to give it up. You don't give up what you already gained. We gained something. Right? Rational mind gave us technology. It gave us everything we have. We don't want to throw it away. So how do you, how do you clean the water without throwing the baby out? So he says, the answer is paradox. Even the rational mind is going to come to paradoxes. Not just uh, Shem's will. In, in rational mind, you're going to show up. Uh, you're going to come up against paradoxes. What do you do with those? So you can come and say, "Ah, oh, that's outside the realm. We don't care." Or you can understand that this is a stepping stone that Hashem is giving you in order to reclaim, but this time not the lower type of divinity, but the higher type of divinity. The lower type of divinity was related to the emotions. The higher type of divinity is what we, we say is related to the crown, to the superconsciousness. It's something entirely different. It's a higher form of divinity. You don't get to it by going into a trance. You get to it by stepping beyond the mind. And how do you do that? You use paradox. So what he's saying here is, this is his interpretation. This is an interpretation that, again, he's relying on what the sages said, but by the sages, it's, it's what do you want? What, I, can't dis- I, I don't understand what you want. By the Baal Shem Tov, will is lower than pleasure and lower than faith. And faith takes you to where the paradoxes are no longer paradoxes. So if you can find a paradox in the mind and the will, it's a stepping stone to get higher. And th- that's the whole point of uh, Hasidus in that respect. It's an attempt to bring back the divinity, prepare the vessels for the divinity that's appearing now, but without throwing away the mind without saying the rationality is wrong. It's not wrong. It's a subset of reality, and it works. It's not that it doesn't work. It works. We, we see that it works uh, right now. Okay? So that, that's always the trick. How, do you, how does humanity move forward without throwing what, what we already gained? Out. You don't want to throw it out. You want to elevate it. And so the, the, the answer of the Baal Shem Tov is paradox. And so in everything he does, paradox. Everything you look at, everything the Baal Shem Tov did to people was reveal paradoxes. What they said that he caused people to forget their Torah was because he revealed the paradox in their, in their learning. And he showed them that without emuna, without faith, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people who learn today without thinking of Hashem. Because it's entirely rational. The whole, uh, most of the world doesn't think about Hashem. But by the Baal Shem Tov, it was very important. That while you're learning, you also have to step up to Hashem. How's that? Uh, learning has to be rational. No. You always have to get to a paradox at the end. Okay. <laughs> so. Just really?